So, you say you want a better, more immersive audio experience than what you get from a TV. You know, the kind of enveloping surround sound to match the fancy picture of your new HDR TV. But you also don't necessarily want speakers all over your living room. Enter the Samsung Q950T soundbar. It's currently Samsung's flagship model and it's a 9.1.4 channel Dolby Atmos and DTSX capable soundbar. And in this video, we're gonna talk about what makes it different from the others and exactly what those numbers mean. Stick around. Hey guys, it's the Villaman here, home theater enthusiast and lover of all things tech. And when Samsung wanted to team up to demystify some of the audio terms, I jumped at the opportunity because helping and growing the community is why we do what we do. So first let's get some context by talking about what exactly Dolby Atmos and DTSX are. Well, these are two of the newest audio standards from Dolby Labs and DTSX, and they are both different flavors of the new object-oriented surround sound formats. So no longer are we limited to the traditional 5.1 channel surround sound format, where sound is created specifically for each speaker channel surrounding you. No, now we have object-based surround sound where the source material has information built in, metadata, which describes exactly where in space an object is, whether it's in front, behind, to the sides, or even above you. Yes, above. And in turn, your system, if capable, will reproduce those sounds. So before in, say, a traditional setup, you had a 5.1 or even a 7.1 channel setup, if you're fancy like that. But now with the new object-oriented sound formats, there have been another number added to the end of it. So now we could see a 5.1.4 channel system or even a 7.1.2 system. Okay, so that's all well and good, but what do those numbers I mentioned mean exactly? Well, they signify both the layout and the number of speakers that the system has. The first number represents the number of speakers that will be at ear level. So in a 9.1.4 configuration, that would mean you'll have nine speakers at ear level. That includes your left, center, right channel speakers up front, which make up your front stage. And then there are your two surrounds in the rears, which is where you'd stop in a traditional 5.1 channel setup, but not this time. We have four more to add to those. In addition to those, you also have two front wide channels to broaden your front stage, as well as two surrounds to make surround sound panning even more immersive. Are those enough speakers for you? I hope not because wait, there's more. The second number refers to the number of subwoofers. And if you ask people like me, that's an essential part of any surround sound setup. Finally, we have the number at the end, in this case four, which represents the number of overhead channels. It can be more or less, of course. This adds the new height dimension to the sound and creates that added atmosphere. That is the key component of the new spatial audio formats like Dolby Atmos and DTSX. So now that we know what those numbers mean, we can now know what to expect from a system that's say 3.1.2 versus one that's 9.1.4. Typically in the audio world, more is better and that's true here too. A 3.1.2 system would consist of three ear level speakers which would consist of the left, center and right speaker as well as a subwoofer and two overhead channels. That's not necessarily a bad thing of course since everyone's space and circumstances are different but now you know what all these numbers actually mean and why they're important. Now, usually to achieve that kind of sound immersion, you need an extensive home theater setup, kind of like this one. But now we have more and more sound bars with that capability. So I bet that leads a lot of you to wonder just how a sound bar can reproduce sound above and behind you. Well, that's where the Samsung Q950T comes in. It comes with all of four pieces, the sound bar, two rear channel speakers, as well as an eight inch ported subwoofer. And they're all wireless. I mean, they all have power cables because they still need to be powered. They just don't need speaker cables because magic. <laughs> 
No, it's wireless tech, but it's still pretty cool. So then how do three speakers and a subwoofer create all of 13.1 channels of sound, you ask? Well, under the surface, there are a lot more than three speakers that make up this bad boy. It actually has a total of 20 speakers and the sub when you add them all up. And they're aimed strategically to bounce the sound around your room to make the system sound precise and much larger than it is. Samsung calls this their acoustic beam technology. The sound bar itself up front has a total of 16 individual speakers, which includes two on each side pointing to the sides at different angles to widen the sound stage, two upfiring ones pointed at the ceiling for overhead effects as well as a dedicated center channel so dialogue remains clear no matter what kind of chaos is going on. The two rear speakers also have two speakers each, one aimed at the listener which is typical for the rear surrounds and the other one pointed at the ceiling for the additional two overhead channels. All that design coupled with the digital signal processing or DSP technology which was developed by Samsung's advanced acoustic audio lab in California allows these three pieces to do the job of 13 traditional speakers by creating that 9.1 4 configuration. And when you combine it with a Samsung QLED TV like the Q90T that I have here using the HDMI port with EARC, then that enables the Q Symphony, which instead of muting the TV so that only the soundbar plays, uses the TV speakers in conjunction with the soundbar to further enhance the sound. To add to the immersion, it's a genuinely cool feature. And if your TV has an HDMI port with an enhanced audio return channel or ERC support like this one does to match the ERC support of the soundbar, it allows the TV to send an uncompressed audio signal to the soundbar. This is great when you're using the TV's built-in apps or if you have HDMI devices connected directly to the TV like a game console or a Blu-ray player because then you'll get the full uncompressed high quality audio. And let's face it, high quality audio is best audio. Let me just say, it's really crazy how feature-packed some of these newer soundbars are. I mean, 14 channels in a small soundbar. That's pretty crazy. I'm really interested to see what the trade-offs are for the convenience of having all this capability in this smaller package. Don't forget to check back for the full review. And I've also left links in the description if you want to check this out some more or even buy one. Don't forget to like the video if you found it helpful. And thanks for watching. Until next time, this has been your friend and neighborhood villa man saying be safe and peace.